I'm resident of Colwood for YouTube. Joel Saints, that's my buddy Bobby Lagosa. That's my buddy Patrick McCray. Hey. We're here to review and talk The Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, directed by Jack Arnold. We have some underwater sequences uh, done by James C. Havens, special photography done by Charles S. Wellborn, um, produced by William Allen, which Allen and Arnold did some other films together, like, uh, let's see, The Space Children. They do Tarantula? Uh, I didn't see that on there when I was looking up IMDb. Yeah, but I know they, I think... they did, which I was, here's the one that Allen produced uh, some movies, uh, The Deadly Mantis, The Mole People, uh, let's see, the, yeah, the Creature Walks, uh, Party Crashers, and The Space Children. Uh, he produced a lot more than that, but what I was most curious, Jack Arnold did 26 episodes of Gilligan's Island. I did not know mm -hmm. that. So. Yeah, I never said because I because I um I'm a Gilligan's Island fan, so I've been I noticed his like name in the credits. Actually, like, early even when I was little, because I was always interested like in like who the director was and the cast and the crew, and I, I would always wonder, is that is that the creature from the Black Lagoon director? <laughs> when I was watching it on Gilligan's Island, and it, I kind of like it fit because you usually see the credit like over the lagoon. Have you watched the Gillings Island trilogy, the the three movies? Yes, I have. Um, that last one I think explains everything if people know where to look, because you finally have Howell's nemesis, J.J. Pearson, mm -hmm. and um, and you finally understand why all these weird things are happening on the island, which is Supremium, and no one talks about the Supremium issue enough. I think. Um, here's my theory. Howell owned the island going way back. And Pearson wanted to get the Supremium. Well, Howell noted Freemason, had his top engineer, Dr. Roy Hinckley, construct a bullet made of Supremium which, you know, Hinckley didn't know why he was creating it, but he said, you know, uh, 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 you know, Mr. Howell, uh, uh, a bullet with the properties you want could be fashioned from Supremium. It would almost be a, a magic bullet. And that Gilligan is the second gunman, easily hypnotized, that, you know, Howell had to get rid of Jack Kennedy. But then they had to hide out and protect the Supremium. And so what do they do? They both pick mistresses. Uh, and, and you know, they bring, they, they got to get, get Gilligan there so he doesn't, you know, get unhypnotized and start talking. Uh, they have to bring Lovey. And, you know, they bring Gilligan's uh, husband, uh, Jonas Grumby. And, uh, you know, who was shattered to learn that, in fact, Gilligan was not his first mate. But, uh, <laughs> But, but, you know, all this emotional stability is there. And and it, it, it all fits together. And that's why the professor keeps screwing up their attempts at escape. Because <laughs> the professor actually engineers these, these things to go wrong and to make it look like it's Gillian's fault. So eventually it's safe. And they can come out. And, uh, and so Howell buys the island. That's when Pearson finally tries to strike. And, in fact... Howell has to regenerate. That's not Thurston Howell the fourth. That's Thurston Howell the third, who's also Thurston Howell the second, and Thurston Howell the first. They just regenerate like the Doctor. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, guys, the creature from the Black Lagoon um, gets into the creation of the heavens and the earth, but it also gets into the creation of how people from like. Creatures from the water came to the land and sort of developed in a weird way. What, what were you guys' thoughts on that? Well, it's classic evolution. Yeah. You know, anyone who's, you know, gone to a, a basic high school biology class knows that, you know, the human evolution goes like this. Germ, fish, mermaid, man. And um, that if you follow that science, the creature is is in there. Yeah, yeah. And I and I felt um, the way it opened that way, it gave it like gave the film like a level of believability, like right from the beginning. You got like a different tone from the 
the previous Universal monsters, whereas yes. this one it feels like even though it's you know, it's science fiction, that it, it did have like that one foot in that one foot on the floor of actual science. Yeah, I I love the fact that you get not just into science, but you actually get to study of because a doctor finds a hand in the sand like he's he's or in the rocks i should say and this isn't like king kong it's very different which i love because by this time you know kong had been done uh bell and the beast or beauty and the beast which was in french i believe in black and white you have a very different feel here and definitely creature from the black lagoon jaws as a huge thank you (laughs) to with this movie um what did you guys think of because again they do a really good job of not showing the creature itself when they show a hand what did you guys think of that is at first less is more a bit i i think they did a brilliant job with that because it's like you really like really notice like at first you watch know, the first attack it's just the hand and it's like yeah. your point of view from the creature and then then the, the first time you see him, like the full body is underwater and it's like a really quick shot. You don't really get a good look at him. And then you see him like underwater with the Julie Adams swimming scene. And then the first time you see him above water, it's just like his feet. And then like the, the, the next time you see him like fully above water, he's been drugged. He's not at full strength. Then the next time you see him, he's at full strength. Like, so I feel like they do a really great job of like each attack Every time you see him, it gets, like, bigger and bigger and bigger. It does. Joel, I have a question for you. Sure. If you were uh, married to a mermaid (laughs) and you found out she was having an affair with the creature from the Black Lagoon, (laughs) would you actually actually be jealous? Because he would be interested in the half that means nothing to you, and you would be interested in the half that means nothing to him. Is Is that really cheating? Didn't I tell you that time I met Julie? Uh, no. Um, no, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm serious about this. No, this this question has been on my mind for years. I think, <laughs> it keeps me I, up. I think, honest, <laughs> well, here's the thing, too. The movie getting into evolution sort of does, it made, what it made me wonder most about this movie is, did the creature look at Julie Adams as, oh, my God, you were once one of me? We don't know that, like, from a standpoint of, because the creature doesn't talk. So maybe the creature was honestly looking for a lost mate that it thought it once had. We don't know. Sure. Mm. Sure. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think the creature would have about as much romantic interest in Julie Adams as an armadillo would have in a hedgehog. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just yeah. don't think it. Right, right, right. I think he thinks, you know, she's a perfectly nice girl. And she's trapped with these monsters. These yeah. men are horrible. Yeah. Oh. I mean, Whit Bissell's always okay, but that main goon, what a what an asshole. <laughs> and and it's a funny thing. I've seen this movie many times. Um uh often in people's homes when they don't know I'm there. And <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh but I, I've seen this movie many times and uh, I, you know, uh, it's a good movie. Now, hear me out. It's a good movie. But I did not enjoy it this time. And I'll tell you, it's still a good movie. This is, this is not disqualifying it for that. Because I, more than ever, the humans were just, I always knew they were, you know, rotten. But they seemed extra rotten, this viewing. And, you know, especially the way they go along with that one, you know, creep. Whoever he is, the one you want the the hairdo, yeah. and uh, Mark, yeah, yeah, and it really made it unpleasant. I mean, it it's Universal is very good at making you sympathize with the monsters. Yeah, you know they they figured that out after Frankenstein and Dracula. I think you know that that, that if they just shift it a little bit you engage yet another level of audience interest. They did a good job with this, but I think this movie really works best setting up the sequels. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, there are technical things that are fantastic about this movie. Don't get me wrong. 
But in terms of just being satisfied by a story, I just I want more for the creature. I want I want better for the creature. And, you know, I mean, I think he got that when he was played by Brooke Shields in Creature from the Blue Lagoon. But that would be much later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. I think, too, with this movie, you get the rich guy, the rich, arrogant guy in this movie. He does come across heelish, I'll say. And you do sympathize for a creature who's sort of looking at Julie Adams with this fascination and wonder. And you're right. Universal. Yeah. They, when you look at the monster movies, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, they made you sympathize easily with the creature more because the creature felt more human than the humans did at times. And here too, they do a really good job of, even like I think there's a, a a shot of when you're looking up at Julie Adams, you could sort of mistake yourself for the creature at times where it almost was like Julie, a first. I thought you were gonna say you could mistake yourself for Julie Adams. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone so many with you once, I'd say that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they do a really great job of making you sympathize for the creature because yeah, Julie Adams is a beautiful, beautiful woman, and you can you get the fascination too, not just from a look standpoint, but for here's a creature that has been dealing with men who are kind of scum in a lot of ways, and here's Julie Adams, I do. Who, who right, who's who's the innocence in all this too? You know, go ahead, Bobby. I'm sorry. Or even um, I was gonna say you're. Uh, you were on his side even when she throws a cigarette in the water. Yeah. Because usually, like, out of all the humans, she's definitely the most sympathetic. But even that, like, you see how, like, even Julie Adams is, like, callous about his home, you know? So you're really... And it lingers on that cigarette. So you you really are on his, on his side. Yeah. Yeah. I think, too, like, what makes the creature so unpredictable, too, is... Unlike where Jaws, a shark is mainly in water, here's this thing that can come on land, which we get real early on, like Bobby pointed out, that we only see the hand, mm -hmm. right, early on. Well, here, there's times when it's on the boat and you're not even realizing it until it, there's there's times they don't make you realize it, and then you see a hand try to come through the window. Right, when, yeah. And when you, when you, the audience, realizing it, you're screaming at Julie Adams, turn around, right, turn yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> I think from just a look standpoint, they do a really good job. I think the three most light or four likable characters in here are Julie Adams' character's boyfriend, Julie Adams' character, the captain, who I liked, because he warns he he like sees Julie Adams in the water and he like hollers out to her character mm -hmm. and the creature. Yes. So, so I do. I think the underwater sequences, because when the first when you first see the underwater, you see like the the bells with the markers like 10, 20, 30, 40, which I think were really, really cool. You're getting the depth of the water that they're in at first, but then they go to the Amazon and the underwater work by the camera up the, the director of photography for the camera was that's what really makes this movie watchable and so good. With, even before you, because the creature, and I do think this is where Jaws got its biggest inspiration from a standpoint of, hey, here's this creature who knows how to hide. Here's, mm -hmm. you know, sharks sort of can hide too when you get into the murky water thing. And, but here's this creature who knows how to hide with the, in the, uh, this this sort of the bushes in those sea or sorry the Amazon River or wherever they're at, it looks really really cool because you're like you're telling you're you almost want to scream at the divers no, no get away from there yeah. get away from there. Uh, what did you guys think of the underwater camera play we got? It's really cool. I th I thought it was amazing. I actually had the pleasure of uh, seeing the creature from the Black Lagoon in 3D at a movie theater a few weeks ago. Ooh. And it was it was incredible. You really like you felt like you were inside the Black Lagoon. 
and it, it, you know, I always liked the underwater photography, but like in 3D in a theater, like it was really, really impressive. Even I like, assume, it, was this was this a film print or was this a digital presentation? I I'm not a hundred percent sure. What what did your glasses look like? They were like the um they were like the fancier glasses. The smoky kind of gray. Yeah. Lenses. Okay. So you lucked out. When this movie was first shown, the the 3D effect was the red blue. Uh-huh. And um uh, that was a perfectly good effect, but it did nothing to help you appreciate the black and white photography. Oh. And it really wasn't until this movie came out on Blu-ray just a few years ago that people got to appreciate, and it's the print that you saw, uh, got to appreciate how beautiful this movie looked uh, in in true black and white. So you actually got to see it in a, in a better form, a form Jack Arnold would have preferred uh, that people at the time didn't get to see. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. I, I have to say, it was a wonder. My um, my ten year old niece came with too, and like at the end, she said, "Impressive." Yes. <laughs> like she loved it. Yeah, because when he finally, when the creature from the Black Lagoon finally actually takes Julie Adams into that cave or whatever you want to call it. It's like you aren't sure what this creature's intentions are with her because yeah. the only thing we've seen him do is just manhandle the men. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I love how again the guy in the costume deserves a lot of credit for how he was able to just die take another person underneath the water and take them through the water and right. then um and boom, into the cave. Boom, 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 you know, boom, right? Boom, 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 really? Right. Oh my boom 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 boom. <laughs> uh, oh hey. Yeah. Uh, what happened? You, you I don't know. I don't know. Was it a practical joke? No, no. Um, I was saying about how the creature, when the creature grabs Julie Adams' character and finally takes her down into that cave, you know, under the water and into that cave, that you are sure of the creature's intentions with her because up to this point, the, all the creature's done is destroy, like, attack the men and like, try to kill them. Yeah, I can't imagine why he would want to do something like that. Uh, I mean, you know, these, these people are horrible. Oh, like, yeah, he, just, he just wants to get her away from these frat boy goons. He does. He does. Um, definitely for sure. <laughs> but I love how he just gently lays her body down. And finally, when they come, they come in and they take care of the creature, uh, start shooting at the creature. I th- what did you guys think of the tree falling? The tree falling down, blocking their entrance. Is it? Did it? Was it? You think it was the creatures doing? Yay or nay? Bob, I, what do you think? I think so. I mean, based on like how he, uh, the creature's smart. You know, like you could tell he's like, he's he's thinking strategically about things, and so I I, I get. I mean, he's half man, half fish. So I, I I could definitely oh, see him figure, yeah. So I could definitely see him figuring that out that this would you know, this would provide a good like trap. Yeah. yeah. And he has the strength to do it too. Yeah. And he has the heart. Yeah. 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 And, and it's strength in here. And it figures out it has a way of luring them down into the water too. Yeah. So I think and that's something they do really well too with that going down into the water and trying to move it. Because they're going back to get help to defeat the creature. I do. There is a bit of a thing here too, where before they go, they do complain about the rich guy, about how you know he's a bit insensitive, and he is. I mean, he comes across very jerkish and sort of standoffish, and he. I always thought when he had the power spear gun, he almost wanted to shoot the male employee and steal Julie Adams away. Everybody. He just wanted to shoot everybody. <laughs> shoot himself. Uh, cool. <laughs> this hurts, but it's great. 
<laughs> so what did you what do you guys think? You think he wanted to uh kill his assistant and steal Julie Adams away? I probably you know, he's psychotic. You know, they just hide it well. Uh-huh. I think he at, at the very least wanted to show that he could shoot uh shoot yeah. David. Even if he wasn't really going to, because I mean he's you know, he's not like a he's not a serial killer, but he wanted to show that hey, if I wanted to, I could. Yeah, because he comes out with this big power spear gun, yeah. and then he's like, he's like watching them make out, and then he points it away from him, and then fires. And I'm thinking, dude, what are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Come on, man! Like, uh, point that away from them, and he does. It's uh, uh, you may you start. So to he wonder, listened to you at last. Well, you start to wonder what kind of evil intent he has at that point. Uh, a bad one. Oh yeah, because okay, you know, as evil intents go, he has a bad one. I always really, I always like because I don't, I don't, I don't know if you guys ever saw the movie Anaconda. Yes, I always, I have. Right, I always sort of wondered like, was this guy going to turn on the male and try to kill him underneath the water and say the creature did it when I mm-hmm. when I watched it way back when. But you know, I knew you know rewatching it you know again today that. I knew that wasn't the case, but still, it makes you feel like that could have been there in this movie. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's like, he's pretty sinister, but he is the guy who's paying for the trip, I guess. Uh-huh. Jewel, have you ever been bitten by a snake? No, no, I've had, um, I will confess to this. I always go outside with my son because I keep having these horrible dreams. And my son's gonna get bit by a rattlesnake, and it, and like I don't know why I have these dreams, but they're horrifying. Well, it's a good thing you don't live in the Pennsylvania wilderness. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know where I live. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> but I do. Well, here's the thing: my father-in-law killed. Uh, I think it was a nine-foot black snake here a couple of days. Oh no! Don't kill black snakes. They eat other snakes. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's was, true. That they, they are they are the exterminators of the snake world. Well, it was trying to attack a bird's nest. The birds were going crazy, I guess. Down easy by come, the, easy go. Circle down, of life. Down by our and I guess the snake had fallen because the birds were pecking at it. Yeah. Had it like stumbled? Uh, did it lose its footing? Well, How it was it's, it's going, like out of the tree. They're pick they're pecking at this oh. thing because it's going for its eggs. Yeah, so, and it just fell. It wanted an omelet. I like an omelet. <laughs> Who does? Snake and have an omelet. <laughs> Not right. Maybe but, we should all go make omelets for snakes in the name of animal rights. But no, I've never been bitten by one. Have you? Oh yeah. Really? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a big, 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 big. Uh, it's many feet. Uh, uh ball constrictor. Oh. And well, the good news is boa constrictor has cat teeth. It has like real little, little teeth because what it does is it just wants to hold the prey so it can wrap itself around it mm-hmm. and then, you know, squeeze it and then just, you know, eat it. So it's kind of lazy, you know, it doesn't want the the combat stuff. And um, there's someone lurking on my, my staircase. Uh, and uh, the... Um, so this, uh, and, and snakes are real dumb. So if you own a snake, the, the one thing you can't do is put your hand in front of the snake's uh, eyesight. height. It's a very bad thing to do. Approach the snake from the side uh, because it'll think it's a bird or something. And because that's what I like see, birds and rodents. And, you know, infants, if it gets large enough. But, uh, you know, we try not to, to let infants get that large. So um, that's why they become humans. Anyway, you know, Jewel, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, so the so the snake got me. Yeah. And what was hilarious is it you could tell it tasted. See, that's Lincoln. Uh, uh, you could tell that the snake tasted human and realized, you know, I'm not supposed to eat this. I'm not big enough to eat this. And it, it I swear to God, it got this huh, huh, look on its face. And then it couldn't disengage its jaws because the teeth go back like this so it was like mm, mm, i'm sorry patrick i can't I, I, i'm really embarrassed <laughs> so 
I had to get a credit card and slip it in between the teeth and the hand. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And go to the ER just because God knows what's in the snake's, you know, system. Um, uh, or if it was the full moon, I'd become a wear snake. You know, Joel, I'm going to tell you something. And Bobby, I want your opinion on this also. If you, if a person had never, had no knowledge of what an infant was, and you saw one crawling across the floor, you'd run and get a broom. And then this weird homunculus, this strange larval with human. With the fly kind of, away. Or, pardon? With the fly away or it doesn't fly away. <laughs> I'm trying to be realistic. If you hadn't seen an infant before, and out of the corner of your eye, you see one kind of worming its way across the floor in one of those sweet pea outfits. Uh, the demented expression on it says you get a broom. You call, <laughs> you call Orca. Here's here's You're the supposed thing. to spray for those things. I I will say like when you when you Lincoln just won't it. stop. He's just is back and forth, back. Oh God, sorry, Jewel. I'm trying to keep this a family show. <laughs> well, when you get an infant, like I I went like to it, even get an infant, like it like it big lots. Well, well, <laughs> well, you buy them by the dozen. Well, when, <laughs> see, I went to the hospital to witness my daughter be born and my son. Uh -huh. So, like, I saw the infant come out of my wife. Oh. If you know what I'm saying. I was south of the equator. Oh. And, um, again, I'm not advising anybody else should be, but that's where I was. Um, you know, so, and I helped actually deliver my son. So that's that's a whole nother matter. Um Again, did you bubble wrap it? <laughs> oh, God, like delivered to whom? <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I think like babies, yeah, babies are, when they come out are, are bloody and messy. I mean, that's what they generally uh, are. Um, because you know they're coming out of another person. Um, yes, you'll be known. Ch childbirth is a, is a scary process, but I think once, once you, uh, Why do you tell everybody what an episiotomy is while you're at it. <laughs> You're really you're going you're going for the gold here, <laughs> but from an infant when you talk about infant standpoint, it's just I don't know. I, I've I've been around kids, and even if I wasn't like I I under like because I was taught um, what is it um, in seventh grade they taught us uh, what is it oh um, I can't think of the class now, but it, it, they taught us about sex and stuff. Um, so they do, they teach you in school what goes on with. Yeah, you, know. you see those videos and you want, yeah, to do with it. yeah. We, I, well, we showed, we got showed three videos in, in that class. One, one was child, a childbirth video, and I forget what the other one was, but the for some reason, our, our teacher showed us like. A person having heart surgery, and I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? <laughs> uh, but, but it's like, okay. Um, so yeah, it's I, so they could get away with showing the birth video, because then if somebody complained, they say, hey, look, we also saw open heart surgery. We are looking at how a human is actually built. Yeah, and everyone. Yeah, and then the parents like, what? <laughs> 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 well played, you know. So uh, I guess I I, I, don't, I don't know if I answered your question, but I hope I did. I don't know if I really asked a legitimate one. I'm I'm just having fun. <laughs> oh my god! So with the creature from the Black Lagoon, <laughs> what's what's the scene that you guys liked and, or disliked? Because. I just so bad for the whole time. There's not, you know, there should be more of a voice of reason in all of this. Yeah. That, you know, it's one thing if you've got, you know, the the great hunter out to get the graboids and it, they're mm. hunting trophies and things like that. Okay. You know, because there's like tons of graboids, you know, as, as you know. Uh, but this... There's just one. There's this miracle of nature. And so, you know, that's, you, you don't kill something like that. You know, you capture it and put it in a sideshow. You know, and that's how you show proper respect is taking it around the South and charging people two bits to take a peek. 
Yeah. That's what that's what the Attenborough guy would do. Uh, Bobby, uh, I I love it. I, I um I love it when the creature is like coming towards you, and like the thing they do the the special effect with his gills. Up. <laughs> like I have always loved that. Um, it's really good effect. It's it's so cool. And I, oh my gosh! And I love when he's like in that cage and like his head like starts to like pop out of the water, and you see. And I love I love the detail of like. They did such a great job. By you, you see him like gasping for air, like like, and it, like I'm, I'm so impressed by like how realistic they play the creature up. Mm-hmm. You know, like they, they like they like, just how like how much of a character they give it. How much like they really do. You're right. With no lines and a costume that restricts a lot of movement. Yeah. Uh, but you're and not even, right. and not even really. I mean, not really eyes either, because they're just like the st- the standard. Of the, so you didn't even have like the benefit of like Boris Karloff of being able to like express through your eyes. Yeah, you know, he's sort of those those black orbs. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think too where the expression sort of come where the best expression the monster has is when you see how where it's underwater and it's hiding. It's not trying to just deliberately attack the men. It's trying to hide from them. It right, doesn't yeah. want to be found by them initially. And it's you give that sort of emotion to the creature where you sort of, at that moment, you're feeling sorry for it. Like right there, because it's like, if these men saw it, they would just probably shoot at the damn thing. And right. well, they do, <laughs> actually. Um, I agree with what Bobby said, it just they do a really great job of emotioning the creature, and even when it comes on the boat too, and you get that movement like on land was really really good. I mean, yeah, for uh, I don't know how much it could have like the actor inside the costume could see or d- did he see, but he does a really really great job of handling the costume. We'll say, be nice. I mean, it's really, really good. What's you guys' favorite Jack Arnold film? Honestly, I, I, oh, I did, honestly, this one. Like, I love the creature from the Black Lagoon so much. Actually, after um, after Dracula, he's my next favorite Universal monster. So I've I've always loved this. I also um, after the after after the creature and Revenge of the Creature, then next would be uh, the Incredible Shrinking Man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, great movie. Patrick? So the question is... Favorite Jack Arnold film? Favorite Jack Arnold film? Uh, did, did he do them? I'm not sure. Let me look. I think he did. I de- he definitely did Tarantula. I'm, I'm almost convinced. Which is why I use the word, like, definitely. Uh... Uh, yeah, I, if he did Tarantula, then I like that one. Um, you know, a Creature from Black Lagoon, it, 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 even with my moral qualms I have with it, which, you know, thank God they'll pass, uh, my, uh, I, I am so blown away by the way the creature's made sympathetic with a very limiting suit. I mean, as freeing as the suit was in a lot of ways, you know, the swimming suits that they had. I think they had numerous suits. Um, uh, it, it really is structured so that he is allowed that kind of sympathy. Mm-hmm. And that's a, I, it's a hard thing to do with a reptile. Um, and when people can't get excited about that, it's called a reptile dysfunction. But uh, that's uh, that's hard to do with a, a, a reptile, uh, and and it's it's even harder to do with one who's not SAG, you know. So uh, and the and the creature apparently had to join SAG after this uh, to make everything okay. But at the time he uh, he did he later went on to uh, he appeared uh, for a season on Archie Bunker's place, and he was great. He did do Tarantula, by the way. So oh, yeah. Well, Tarantula, that, that was one of the first horror movies I ever saw. I'm still scared of Leo G. Carroll and Spiders. Um, 
uh, that was a hell of a film. That and Monolith Monsters. I watched both of those with my grandfather. And I, they're still two of my favorite favorite monster movies. Cool, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Um, did favorite scenes. What's... Okay, so John Carpenter was was going to remake this, but didn't get a chance to, uh, or just didn't get to. So would you guys like to see this remade, and who would you cast in Julie Adams' role? Um, I, I can't talk about that because of uh, the judge's uh, ruling. But, uh, no. um, I, you know, I, I yeah, some, some gal. But I would, um, as far as does this movie need to be remade? Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Uh, normally, I am not a, a big one to say that modern sensibilities need to be put on an older story because it just seems weird without them. But this just seems weird without them. And I think we have a real clarity about uh, the environment and and certain issues with, uh, you know, animal cruelty and um, and stuff of that nature. And so I think the, the contemporary sensibility is uh has something to really offer this story as opposed to does dracula need a modern sensibility to unlock it for the audience no no it's fine you know um so that's my thought bobby what do you think that's that's such an interesting comment patrick like because they, they that really is it's really interesting because you're so right because so much of the um of the original, like, it's, like, the sensibilities of the time, like, how J Jack Arnold was sort of ahead of his time in terms of, like, his feelings about environmentalism. Yeah. Where, like, like, whereas today, that, all that, all those elements would be played out differently, like, because it's the modern area. So, like, like, it would, like, those, Jack Arnold would no, it would no longer be ahead of its time. We're just trying to lightly imply it. So, that yeah, I think that'd be, like, it would be a very uh, interesting remake. Definitely, mm -hmm. like, Especially bringing like those sensibilities like back. Um, yeah, I mean, oh. you know, there's there's nothing that the modern world can bring Bride of Frankenstein. Right. Bride right. of Frankenstein has everything it needs. It is a perfect movie. I think it's the greatest horror movie ever made, and um, and so there's nothing to offer that. But Creature in the Black Lagoon is full of great ideas, largely in what it inspires the audience to ask. Yeah, it's, it's full of great ideas and um, a lot of a lot of good human insights, uh, but it it doesn't have the liberty to really follow them completely because it's trapped in this, you know, 1954 kind of orthodoxy. So, yeah, we'll free the creature while supplies last. Film, <laughs> film this in the Florida Everglades. Get Doug Jones to play the creature. And have it where the creature saves whoever you cast as Julie Adams' role for an alligator or crocodile. Have it look like the hero more than the men is. And mm -hmm. for the Julie Adams role, I don't know. There's a lot of that, a lot of pretty actresses out there who are talented. Um, God, there's a girl I had a picture on on the Facebook, German actress. I forget her name, but. She looks very, very pretty. I can't think of her name now, but so I'll go with um, Andy Matichek from Halloween 2018 for Julie Adams' role. Good for um, you. Uh, so I, I'm horrible with remembering certain names. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do think that definitely humanizing the creature like you did in the original is definitely something they should preference if they're going to remake it. I agree. You know, no matter what, no matter who does it. I mean, I would have loved to see John Carpenter remake this. I mean, he's he still could if he wanted to, I guess. Yeah, it'd be an interesting piece for John to do. It's a, it's a little outside, you know, his normal stuff. So yeah. I'd, I'd be curious to see, see what he would do with that. Now, considering Spielberg did Jaws, do you think he would tackle it? Uh, I no. He, yeah, he seems like, like he always seems like so like kind of like still like emotionally scarred from like the Jaws experience. Yeah, I feel, I feel like he wouldn't even like want to go there, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
Def, definitely, definitely that uh, dwarf got scarred for the emotional experience. <laughs> <laughs> Real shark tear apart the cage. Um, yeah, he filmed it in open water and stuff for the most. For he filmed a dwarf in open waters. Well, no, the movie he filmed it for the biggest part in open water. Um, was, what do you? Um, this is such an interesting question. What like? How do you think he would have done it if it was 1975 and instead of directing Jaws, it was a creature from the Black Lagoon remake? Oh, uh, he, I don't think he would have got it. I'm going to tell you that. And I'll tell you why. Because at that time, Spielberg, and I love him as a director, but he was very arrogant. Especially when he was younger, he was very arrogant. If you got it, flaunt it, baby. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, he's. Don't get me wrong. From a from a cinematography standpoint, he would have got that for sure. But I'm not sure he would have got the make the creature sympathetic. Mm-hmm. I don't think he would have did that. Personally, me personally, I don't think he would have did that. I'll say that. Could be. Could be. I don't know. I mean, I don't think you can make a shark sympathetic. Honestly, I mean because. Even if, like, we learned so much. That's the thing. The first, one of the first things I learned about in history class was the sinking of the USS Indianapolis. So, I mean, I, I, that's I an intense way, way to go. I, I feel the only way to make it like sympathetic would be like if you had like a lot of like a lot of Davids, where like you had, yeah. remember how in Creature, how, how, how the character David Richard Carlson, he'd always, he'd always say something like, no, leave it alone. Like, he like kind of defend if you had like a lot of those characters saying, "Oh no, the shark is just doing what its natural thing," and that mm. was like the message. It was like drilled home. Yeah, yeah. But like not in terms of, but like not in terms of sympathetic, like as a, like a character. Yeah. Interesting. What do you guys give this movie? One out of ten. Well, I'm one of ten. I love it. For technical reasons, especially, I have to give it a 10. And just for moving the, the whole medium of horror movies ahead, you have to give it a 10. Yeah, I think from an inspiration standpoint, too, you got to give it a 10. Oh, yeah. I mean, they they were really, from just an underwater camera standpoint, they were really, really ballsy in this movie. And it shows. I mean, when, you, I, when I threw my DVD and rewatched this, my wife sat down next to me. She goes... Man, that's some really, really cool under water camera work. I'm like, yes, it is. Uh, and, and then did she ask you to get the television out of the the kiddie pool or what, 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 the underwater camera work? <laughs> you went nuts in the backyard, Joel. We all know it. Oh my god! It, oh, and I'd like like to add another like Jaws comparison. Remember earlier I was telling like how each time you see the creature, like you see like more of a strength, how it's a bigger attack. They told this. That's the same way they like they structure the shark's appearances in Jaws. So like, yeah. it really was like the Jaws of its day. I think too. Like the, the when you get into Jaws versus this movie, what made Jaws work is the fact that the shark didn't. Mm. I mean, oh, sure. you know, in a lot of ways. Like here, you got a person in the suit who's we've all talked about delivering this emotional performance more so yeah. than the men. It just, it's it, when you do a comparison piece, it's just crazy to think about all right, like yeah. both movies and their own texture. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there anything you guys want to add before we go? Um, do we know if the creature was male or female? I, I think it was a male. So, he did That's not lay problem. eggs. <laughs> oh, you think about it. It was a reptile, you know. Yeah. Well, well, here's the thing of that. Godzilla, in well, the original Godzilla could uh, self-reproduce, so who knows? <laughs> who knows? And again, it comes back to science. There's Always science. <laughs> Bobby, what do you think, male or female? The uh, the monster. Um, I think. Would it 
perhaps would it be like a species that's able like to turn like tr- like be able to go back and forth and is that's why like it, it's like the only one but it's like survived for so long i think it was a swinger perhaps perhaps what we don't the one thing we don't know i mean because we do see the footprints in the sand is how many have evolved from shore to land you think you know what i mean from w- well, water to shore it doesn't quite work that way. I mean, you know, we're talking about, you know, well, right. Millions of years go right. into, you know, kind of evolution. It's very slow. No. It's like the drive through at Arby's. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've, got, I've got my own bad experience there that I won't talk about, um, which involves my credit card. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is a fun. This was a fun movie uh, to review, guys. Um, anything you guys want to add before we go? I'm sorry. No. No. Oh, what did you guys think of his cameo on the Monsters TV series? It was marvelous. Long overdue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I never saw that episode, so I can't comment. Oh, it's a good one. It's it's called. It's just at the end. His name is Uncle Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> and, but it, what's cool is the it's the episode's called "Love Comes to Mockingbird Heights." So it's like and I, I it still like has like the romantic th- uh, theme of the creature from the Black Lagoon movie. And here's the thing too: proof that universe, like modern Universal, might have not got the creature from the Black Lagoon. And I love the movie for what it's for, but the the Monster Squad, like. That movie, when the kids shoot the shoot the creature from the Black Lagoon fish face, it's just like, yeah. And but yet they do they do sympathize for the werewolf though. He's like, thank you when he gets shot with the silver bullet. Um. So yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's all I have to add. I want to thank Bobby Lagosa. I want to thank my buddy Patrick McCray. Thank you guys so much. Link to Bobby's channel is going to be in the description box. Lagosa Theater. Link thank to the Park Shadows Day Book and Bound is going to be in the description box. Guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jewel. Thank Have you. a good night. This has been a big flash. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <Very nice. laughs>